I wouldn't call them refugees because, I mean, a refugee would be somebody fleeing, like in the Middle East, we have 350, 400,000 Christians being persecuted as well as being beheaded and crucified. And, uh, you know, they're leaving, but they're going back and they're, they're fighting. Those would be refugees. These people are uh, seeing it, being sold an opportunity. They're looking for hope, of course. They want to become Americans because we're the land of milk and honey. And they want a piece of the action. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, we need to secure a border. There's no amnesty because every time we say that, there's just more and more. It fuels the coyote narrative. Come to America. They won't do anything. You'll get arrested. You'll be given a court date. And you can melt away in the fabric of America and never have to, you know. And eventually, they're going to give you amnesty. All that does is, is uh, help the coyotes uh, uh, in their business of making three to seven thousand dollars per per person they escort to the border. Did you find any people down there who were willing to acknowledge that that's what's driving it? You know, that's an interesting thing. We're showing all these things about how they do things uh, Monday through Friday. And to give you an example, we were in El Salvador on a Friday, uh, and they told us they get um, you know three to eleven busloads of people returning, but I didn't see any people. I saw the kids in school, you know, in a daycare center, kids in a school. Uh, but uh, we were shown the facilities where they uh, put the returning uh, citizens who were caught trying to jump our borders um, in these facilities for the transition back into to their home and to their relatives. But I only met one, and that person, I think it was in Honduras. That's really heartbreaking that they go through that whole journey, face all those dangers, get put in the detention center up here, and then face the same thing back down there. Yeah. Do you think President Obama is to blame for this situation, that this exodus was sparked by his? Well, if, you, if we had secure borders, not just being told we have secure borders, um, we wouldn't have this problem. We wouldn't have this situation. You know, we have to be, um, we have to uh, return these people back to their relatives in their country of origin safely and humanely. I think that's very important. That's a priority issue. I have people waiting in line now. They're dealing with a bureaucratic mess, and they came in legally. And they are being put off uh, administratively, and uh, their, their work visa or their green card expires. And because uh, our, our uh, uh, customs and uh, immigration folks are so busy dealing with this problem, they're going to suffer because now they're going to be overextended because they couldn't get um, administrative permission to stay, which if they had a hearing, they would probably be given permission to stay and work. You know. It sounds to me like from what your firsthand experience was, yes, life down there is, is very hard and the conditions are difficult. But uh, so you can understand why people are making a case for that's why there's this exit. We have the same problems but, here. We have inner city Detroit, right. New York. It almost explain why all of a sudden it started happening. Yeah, I mean, we have kids that aren't graduating from high school. We have kids that aren't attending school. We have uh, uh, jobless. Where we have joblessness in our country is so bad that we have uh, probably the highest number of people uh, have given up looking for work than in the 60 years of my life. I mean, we, you've read the numbers. We have people who have just given up. And that's what a lot of these people down in uh, Central America have done, as well as Mexico, given up. And they, they said, hey, there's, there's uh, the land of milk and honey, and if you go, nobody's enforcing the law, which is a terrible thing to say because we make laws. We expect the executive branch to enforce those laws, and they're not doing it. They're picking and choosing. And this is just a, another uh, scandal in, in a litany of scandals in this administration, every week, it's like a, it's a new soap opera. What's going to be the big scandal this week? Yeah, uh, but this his soap opera. I think the ratings are dropping fast. Uh, in conclusion, anything particularly surprising or shocking that jumped out at you? Well, I did ask. We uh, went to a classroom uh, with 25 students, and I asked, uh, "How many of you have a relative in America?" And they. Uh, I think 20, I think all but one raised their hands. Yeah, I think there was one, and I think maybe they were reluctant because, you know, if we said that, he'd be investigated or something, and we'd find out who they were and send them home. But uh, that was pretty telling, you know, that every one of those kids there, uh, for the most part, all but one, uh, has a relative living in America. I wanted to ask if they were there legally or not, but I think um, 
you know, I, I kind of got the answer I wanted. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to. But kids are great. Um, they're like everybody else. They, every other kid that wants to learn, they're strive, or they're hungry for an education. They want to do the right thing. And I think if some of those uh, are, those are more long-term issues, but we have those same issues in America, and we have to take care of Americans first. I mean, they're here. They're, we're the ones that pay the taxes. We uh, need to take care of Americans. We need to be uh, uh, humane and understanding and, and uh, patient, but we need to close our border. We need to fix the problem we have now. They need to go home where they, where they uh, in their home of origin or the country of origin, and um, uh, we need to secure that border. We need to send them a strong message that if you want to come to America, do it legally, get in line. That's it, that's very simple. Get in line, and if you don't want to come, we'll address some of these other issues about, um, there's some talk now, uh, and I'd like to see the final details on extending the H-2A visas, H-2B uh, visas. You know, that's something we can talk about after this crisis is fixed and everybody's sent home. We can start talking about that. 